Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buried the dead, supplicated with his companions in a clear evidence and a manifestation of worshipping only one Allah and in accepting whatever Allah azza wa jal has decreed upon the Muslims. No questions, no rejection, no objections to what Allah azza wa jal has decreed on them. They went with the wounded to Medina. And as soon as the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, and this was Saturday, it's one day event, he thought that there is a possibility that the polytheist would come back and attack Medina. Because going to Mecca, it's about three days ride. So maybe they had second thoughts and we didn't do anything. Let's go back and finish what we've started. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ told his companions, whomever was with us yesterday in, in, in Uhud must come and go with us to Hamra al-Asad in order to fight the mushriks. Chief. Did any one of the campaigns complain about uh, too much fighting, battle after battle? Did one, one of them complain? No, not, not even one of them complained because, again, this was their objective. What is their objective? Is to support Islam, to support the Prophet ﷺ, and to get the honor of dying at the cause of Allah. So it was excellent for them. This is their bread and butter. Now, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged them to go to Hamra al-Asad. And as we can see uh, uh, on the screen, Hamra al-Asad is about eight miles away from Medina. It's not that far. But again, it's outside of Medina. So, the instructions were clear. Only those who fought with us in Uhud were to come out with their wounds. And no one else. And this was also to show the polytheists the strength of the Muslims, even when they're down and wounded. What's the wisdom from to take only the, the people who fought before? Because he wanted those who were with him to be stronger. And when you see those who you attacked yesterday still standing in front of you today, yeah. this means that you you are actually seeking to die at the side of Allah with your wounds. So they all went as the Prophet ﷺ called them to go out. Now, exactly as the Prophet ﷺ thought in the middle of the way, Abu Sufyan stood and said to the people, what have you done? You've done nothing. Muhammad is alive, Abu Bakr is alive, Umar is alive, and all what you've done were, were 70 casualties. It's nothing. Let's go back and finish what we came to do in the first place. Safwan ibn Umayyah, though his father was killed in the Battle of Badr, but he was a smart man. He said, people, now we've barely escaped. And come on, who, who are, we, are we fooling? We know what, what took place. So if we go back there, they are going to come with fresh people, people who are eager to fight and then something bad is going to happen and we don't want this. The majority were with Abu Sufyan and they all said, no, we're going to finish what we started. Stop. Now the Prophet ﷺ reached Hamra al-Asad and he was met by a man called Ma'bad ibn Abi Ma'bad al-Khuzai and he was from a, a, a tribe that had good relations with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Was so, a Muslim? No, he was not a Muslim. So the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam met this man and this man was an ally of the Muslims. So he 
gave his sympathies to the Prophet ﷺ and he felt sorry to what happened to his companions and to his uncle especially. So the Prophet, using his wit وسلم, told him, if you see the disbelievers, try to turn them back and away from us. And this is war. So uh, Ma'bad went and on the way he met Abu Sufyan and those who were uh, with him, the, the, the enemy army. And they trusted him. So they said, Ma'bad, where did you come from? He told them, I came from Medina. And I came from a very, very strong army of fresh fighters who were so eager to kill you, I could see it from their eyes. And they came in huge numbers. All those who did not come to fight in, in the Battle of Uhud came out now. And the minute they heard this, they felt afraid. Because themselves, the Polis army, were wounded. And they were tired and exhausted of what took place. So when they heard this, they felt afraid and they decided to go right. to Mecca. But also Abu Sufyan used a similar trick. So he sent one of his, uh, a group of his allies who were neutral, like Ma'bad, and he told them that go to Medina and I will give you so and so. He made a bounty for them and told them that all what you have to do is go to the Prophet ﷺ and his army and tell them that we've met a huge army of the disbelievers and reinforcements coming from Mecca and they were all coming to Fight you. invade you. So he tried to do the same. And this is what took place. They went and met the Prophet ﷺ and told them that the people are gathering tribes of the Arabia and so much power and they're coming to invade you. And what was the answer of the Muslims? It was in the Quran where Allah Azawajal praises the action of the Muslims where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people, when the people came to them, told them, fear those who are coming to fight you because they are in great numbers. This, Allah Azawajal tells us, did not add anything to their hearts except more faith and belief in Allah Azawajal. They increased the faith in their yes, hearts. Yes, it did not decrease it or made them feel afraid. Yeah. On the contrary, it filled it with faith and they said, Hasbunallah wa ni'm al wakil. Then Allah Azza wa Jal is our supporter and we have our full trust in Him. And this increased in their level of Iman and in the reward of Allah the Almighty and nothing happened bad to them. The Prophet Sallallahu stayed in Hamra al-Asad for a few days and of course they failed to come and meet the Prophet ﷺ because they themselves went were back. afraid and went back to Mecca. On that particular year, the third year of Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ gave his daughter Umm Kalthum to his great companion Uthman okay. ibn Affan. We know that Uthman was married before to Ruqayya the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, who died just at the time of the Battle of Badr. And the following year, the Prophet ﷺ immediately gave his second daughter to Uthman ibn Affan, which indicates that the love and, 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 and belief in Uthman where the Prophet ﷺ does this to him. And that is why Uthman is known to be the Nurain, the one with the two lights because he married two of uh, the prophet's daughters, of the daughters. daughters and this shows to us that Uthman's status is far better than Ali ibn Abi Talib's status yeah. because Ali had only one. one daughter of the prophet while Uthman had two daughters and also Umm Kalthum died at the lifetime of Uthman may Allah be pleased with him and the prophet said that if I had a third daughter, I would have given it to Ibn Affan to show that 
the trust and love he had for Uthman ibn Affan. Also in this year, the Prophet ﷺ married the daughter of his best friend, Umar ibn Khattab. And Umar ibn Khattab had a daughter by the name of Hafsa. And Hafsa, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, uh, was married before, but her husband happened to die. And, his, and her husband was Khunais ibn Hudhafa. He was injured on the Battle of Badr and he died. So the Prophet ﷺ married her. And her marriage story is, is quite strange because when her husband died, she was left, she, she was widowed. So Umar ibn Khattab, her father, went to his best friends. He went to Uthman ibn Affan. And he told him, Uthman, your wife died. That was Ruqayya. You're unmarried. You're a bachelor now. So how about marrying Hafsa, my daughter? And Uthman was still mourning his wife. So he said, um, I can't. I don't, want, I, I don't feel like marrying. So he wasn't very pleased with that. So he went to his second companion and friend. He went to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr and said, Abu Bakr, my, my daughter Hafsa has been widowed. And what about if you marry her? So Abu Bakr did not answer him and ignored him. And this felt even worse. And then, to his surprise, the Prophet ﷺ proposed to her. And of course, this was a great honor and Umar immediately accepted and she was uh, 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 wedded to the Prophet ﷺ. Only then Abu Bakr came to Umar, his friend and companion, and apologizing, Umar, I hope that you didn't f find anything in your heart against me when I did not answer you. He said, yes, I did. He told him, the truth was that I heard the Prophet ﷺ mention Hafsa's name. So I knew that he was going to propose to her. And that is why I didn't accept. Otherwise, I would have definitely accepted her to be my wife. And the Prophet ﷺ married Hafsa bint Umar ibn al-Khattab. And she became the mother of the believers. I believe that this is all the time we have for today's program. So inshallah, until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.